Hey everyone, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you the crafty goodness that I've been working on this past week. A big thank you to everyone that joined me during the live stream and for those of you that have been watching the replay. I had a really good time. I always have a good time on the lives. We made our 3D pinwheels. We had a lot of fun making the blue guy because we learned when Robin takes two pieces of fabric and stitches them together, when she picks them up from the table, she turns them. So now that I know how I've been messing up all of my quilts and all of my layouts all of this time, nothing's gonna change. If I need to really pay attention, I really pay attention and I label everything, put numbers and letters and everything is great. But we were trying to do the light, dark, light, dark. I didn't even realize that's how I cut out the fabrics. So someone noticed that it would be nicer to alternate them and it was, but I just couldn't do it. And that's why if you watch the replay, you'll see that it's a good idea to pin your fabrics and open them up and peek before you take them to the sewing machine. And that helped stop me having to seam rip. Taking out a pin is nothing. Taking out the seam ripper is a little bit more. Plus, taking out a pin doesn't fray your fabric very much. I say very much because some fabric is a little temperamental and they stress out a little. Here is the one from Friday's tutorial. I've decided that I like a plain background. And as a group, we decided we like it with a button in the center. Plus, it hides any little oops. This one has, with all the trouble, not it wasn't trouble. It was just too much talking and not enough paying attention and a little bit of, well, a whole lot of Robin. So we found out that if you don't pay close attention, your points that you fold down might not all reach the center. I think this one by far was the favorite. a button in it and then it really looks like those pinwheels on a stick that you blow on and you know the childhood favorites. I also realized that I very much prefer a plain solid fabric for the background that even one that reads as a color so this one's definitely gray but I don't like how busy it is it takes away from the pinwheel so I definitely prefer on my own design board I definitely prefer to have that solid versus anything with a little design on it. Wait, we got one more. Does that work? So I hope you give this a try and even just try one. They're not as hard as they seem. When you watch the video, you'll realize it, it feels like it should be complicated, but really you can just go ahead and pin it and it, and it works out fine. You don't even have to worry about things shifting around too much. But if you do have issues like I did here, just go ahead and do a little top stitching to sew it down and hold it in place before you do all your folds and sewing pieces together. But even just a little bit of glue, one of the viewers found out is very helpful. So if you make a large one, it can be a pillow. You can put this in the center of a wall hanging. It really is hard to choose a favorite. I do love the little tiny polka dots and I think it's so cute when it's small, but there's something about these fabrics that I'm just drawn to. And you guys know these aren't, you know, these aren't my normal colors, but I think it's really pretty. Enough of the pinwheels, let's see what else I worked on. I finished my March block for the birdie stitch along. So I'm gonna go ahead and get April started. The only thing left to do here is I want to stitch the word March right here. I'm not gonna bother with, I feel like I'm not gonna bother with the year, but I've got a feeling I'm gonna put a little 22 there. But I wanna do it with just one embroidery thread. So it's nice and thin and light and just down in that corner. So when I go to pull these out each month, I'll know which month is which. And I mean, I could put it on the back but I think just having a little March slash 22 would just finish it off nicely. Then it becomes more of an art piece because people sign and date their pieces of work, right? I have to pull out April's and see what it is. I don't know if it's full on Easter. I'm curious, let me look. I have my little birdie stitches container here. And for those 
that were saying I should make myself a little flamingo pouch, I do have one. It's just a Santa Claus one. So I'm using this to keep all of my floss in. So there is for April, it's an Easter eggs hiding in the tree, one hanging off the tail, and then a little Charlie Brown. It's always gonna be a Charlie Brown zigzag to me. Anytime I see that, that is always Charlie Brown. So this one will be really cute and fun to work on. I might even go a little crazy and make it an actual Easter tree and do some pastel colors for my swirls because it's my block. I can choose anything I want. I don't have to make my tree green and it doesn't have to be brown if it doesn't have leaves on it. So maybe with these swirls, I might do some pastels. So this is how I see it when I look at it. And when I'm looking into my phone right now, I can see the rainbow and stuff, but it doesn't show up as much. But I feel like even with some pastels, as long as I'm careful and I go at the darker end of pastel, because you can have dark pastels and light pastels, and I think that would be kind of fun. So what I'll do is to decide on if I want to do this, I will take the embroidery floss and just pull some out, and I will just lay it on there to see how it looks. Now, I'm not using six strands. I'm only using three. I could pull off three and separate it, but just by putting the colors against the gray background, if I can't see six strands of a pale yellow on this gray background with the tree, then how am I gonna see it with only three? So that'll give me an idea. Just like when we pull off our thread and test it for quilting, I can do the same thing here and decide what I wanna do. And then bring in some really dark green here and I can do the tree trunk can still be a dark brown to make some light and dark and definition in the block and then I can also make my birdie a variety of things and that way if I want to make some darker eggs or even stick with the paler easter eggs that can be done too but before I can start stitching I need to decide on my fabric now if I take too long and I don't choose the fabrics for my border going around and I don't decide on something really soon I'll go ahead and start on the stitchery anyways and then I will stitch the border on later because for this one I will need to be careful to make sure I leave the good quarter inch seam allowance all along the edge where there's grass and the tree so they might be a little close when I hold it up to this block, I can see that these are going to be pretty close to the edge. So I just need to be aware of that when I trace it out to make sure that in my eight and a half inch block, my eight inch portion of it, that my embroidery won't get cut off when I sew on the borders. So has anyone else finished their March birdies? I have a fabric postcard that's going out. Sorry about the glare. I reminded myself over and over my head as I was preparing this fabric postcard. Don't put it in the plastic thing. Don't prepare it to be mailed. I have the addresses and everything. It's all stamped and ready to go in the mail tomorrow. I'm like, don't do it. You're gonna do the video in the morning. Go ahead and leave it out. I didn't leave it out. I never leave it out. You guys are lucky that I'm actually remembering to show it to you and it hasn't, well, it hasn't gone in the mail because it's Sunday. But there's a fun little one and I did some diagonal pink quilting. You can see those lines. I think I've done a postcard every week for a little bit now, maybe most weeks. I made a key fob. There's some gray on the inside and then that red berries on the outside. I was trying to be creative. You can, you can see that gray there. I thought it was gonna be more of a diagonal so it would almost come to a point down here. So I have that for the scrap. So it's not as creative as I'd hoped. And gray on the other side. But it is a key fob. It's done. It's sewn from the scraps and it has a really pretty rose gold little clippy lobster claw type thing there. So I thought that was really sweet. So that's going to go in with the red berry collection. I did work on the tote. I have it all quilted up. So I have the quilting going diagonally and it's a quilting in a I went and used the, the pre-wound bobbins again in the top and the bottom, and it's more of a, it's like a polyester cotton blend or something like that. So it has a nice little, it's, it's finer than the threads that I use. So it just hides the quilting thread, but you can still see the quilting. And then on the bottom, I went this way. And I finished both panels, and as you can see, they have gray handles. And I do like the way the gray handles work with this. I think it definitely finishes off the little tote bag. 
So the next step will be to actually make the lining. But I put this aside because I wanted to work on a different tote. I wanted to start on the flamingo tote. So here is one side. I had enough of this fabric to do one side of the tote and then to make one of those little snap wallets for the outside of the fabric. A little bit left to possibly make a zipper pouch and if not, then a fabric postcard. So I have this. But I thought for the other side, I wanted something fun and that went with the flamingos, but since I only had the one panel of that, that's not going to work for both sides. I went with this. I was testing out an idea to see if I made some rectangles going you know, left and right, and then I slid them over by half of a brick, so it's like a brick for a house. And I had the layout super nice, all set out on a board. You watch the replay or you're at the live stream all the way to the end. I showed these two projects at the end and everything was really nice. It was laid out, it, it was appealing to the eye. I had the whites and the blacks all kind of mixed up. Nobody was really touching each other. But then when you shift them, you shift every other row, a half of rectangle in, all of a sudden things started lining up. I would get three whites in a row, then I'd have two of the same blacks, or there would be, these are different blacks, but there'd be like the same black here and the same black there. And I'm like, oh, all that work, taking those pictures, rearranging it, keeping it safe for a couple days. So the cats didn't knock it over. I didn't bump into it and it didn't work out the way I wanted. So after I had all of them done and I stitched them two rows, 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 two rows Actually, there's like six of those sets of two. Then I started flipping them and moving them up and down and shuffling them around until I came up with this. And I think this is fine. I think once I go ahead and quilt it, a lot of the obvious bright things will calm down a little. Once you start quilting things, I notice, especially when you do them in the matchstick quilting like this, it tends to, I don't want to say dull it, but it does, it tends to dull it a little bit. So things don't all just jump out. So those really super bright, bright fabrics are just pleasantly bright. They're not really annoying neons or anything. So it calms it down. So I'm hoping same thing with this. I am thinking just to do the diagonal quilting. I just wanna see when I do a couple rows, if it twists the rectangles at all. I haven't had problems before with other squares or anything, so I just want to make sure this time that it doesn't twist it at all. I took some of leftover from this and I put it into here, so I brought that around. I had scraps of this fabric that I really loved and I I was going to cut it so they all went sideways, that pink stripes, but it just didn't work out so they go up and down and that's fine. I just thought it'd be fun if they went left and right vertical, horizontal, left and right horizontal with the rest of the brick layout and stuff. So my plans for today is to get both of these quilted and trimmed up. There won't be, as you can see, this is as is. There won't be any bottom. Right now, they're just a little over 17 inches. I think this one might be 18 or this one might be 18, but I wanna trim them down after they're quilted and I'm hoping that they'll be at about 16 and a half. So somewhere between 16 and 17 and I'll be happy. Get that quilted and see what I can do. I'll probably, instead of working on the linings today, each of these being quilted, this one will be quick. It'll take me a little over an hour to quilt this. And I wanna do it with the pre-wound bobbins that so that they'll just disappear in here and I don't want it to be noticeable. But for this side, I'm thinking to pull out all of my pinks and just do the diagonals in a variety of pinks. And I want to, I think I'm going to start out with the darkest pink and do those every inch. I like to grid it off, do some, I use my hair marker and I just, draw down. So this is my hair marker. You just put a ruler and it just makes a little bit of a crease fold looking thing. So I do that every inch and I stitch those first and that holds everything in place. So I don't have to worry about any pins. So I'm thinking about doing the darkest color for that. And then afterwards, then I start doing the in-between. I do the halfway, a half inch, and then I do a quarter on each side. And I do that in sections. So after I do all of this, you know, the one inch mark, then I'll start in a corner and I will go right down the center of the two one inch marks. 
Then I'll move it over and I'll go in between that halfway so it'll be a quarter inch and then a quarter inch and then I move down. So that by the time I get back to this side, it's all done. I was doing it where I did the half, the one inch mark all the way, then I go back through and do the half and then I do the quarters and I thought, why go through all of that when I can just do them all at the same time because you're only moving your needle over you know, a quarter inch to a half an inch, so it's no big deal. And by the time I'm done with those, the one, as I said, will take, I know it takes me an hour and nine minutes to hour and eight minutes, I think it was, to work on that. This one is probably going to take closer to two hours because of changing the thread and changing the bobbin and all that and making sure I decide which way I want my colors, medium pink, light pinks, and all of that, and just to get it to look nice. And I know it's a lot of work for a simple little tote bag and I'm probably doing too much, but I enjoy it and I really like the way it turns out. I like how all of that tight quilting gives it some structure and they do tend to almost stand up on their own. I do the same type of quilting on the handles and I think that works really well for the larger tote bags. For the smaller tote bags, if I were to just make one with a full fabric like this and it was a smaller one, maybe a 14 and a half inch or a little bit smaller, 12 and a half inch, I think that's what I was doing on those before. Then I would just put a couple little squiggly or just a little quilting here and there, an inch and a half apart, two inches apart, depending on the fabric, and that would be done. So this one would be a much softer one if it were smaller, but for the larger ones, I love to over quilt them. So I hope everyone had a nice National Quilt Day and you were able to do some type of quilting this weekend. This is what I worked on on Saturday after doing different video stuff, but at least I did get some quilting in. I was very happy to do that. I haven't made any videos ahead, so I need to work on Friday's video coming up this week. I need to take care of that. Oh, where is... When I was thinking about... When I was talking about the videos for this week, I forgot the other object that I worked on. I finished the top to the mini bolt. This is, I think, nine and a half by 12 and a half right now. So this is what I'm working on with my patrons. So then this week coming up, we're gonna go ahead and get it quilted, put the binding on, and I'm going to teach them a different technique for hanging mini quilts. So just something that you can do to make it easy to hang it up. But I love the way this turned out. I had a question, what am I going to do with all of these mini quilts and mug rugs when I'm done making them? When we made the mug rugs recently, I kept a couple of them. I sold a couple of them, the ones with the gnomes, put them in my Etsy shop. If I make something that either doesn't come out quite right, I always keep the oopsies, or if it's something that I know I love the pattern and I choose fabric specifically for myself, I'll keep it and I'll hang it up here in the studio in one of my mini quilt walls that you guys can't see, but you have seen many times. If anyone's interested, check out my Talk To Me Tuesday videos and I'll put them in a link into the pinned comment down below and you'll be able to see the wall behind me. I've also done several room tours where you see them. But otherwise, they're just gonna go in the Etsy shop. I make a lot of things now and I, well, I've always made a lot of things, but I make a lot of things for videos. I can't keep them all and I can't gift them all. So I mean, I could gift them all, but even my friends and family would get tired of them after a while. So I put them in my Etsy shop. So if anyone falls in love with them, they can go ahead and grab them. This one was fun to work on and I can't wait to see it quilted and finished. I haven't decided on the quilting yet. My first thought was to quilt it in a zigzag and mirror this lightning bolt on the way out, but I don't know. I might just go ahead and do a diagonal quilting, but I, I, I think I wanna make sure that the lightning bolt stands out. So I don't want to actually quilt in that area. So whatever I do, if I do it on the diagonal, I would have to go down and then stitch a little and go back just so that this part sticks out. Maybe I'll even put a little extra batting behind it or something. We'll see. And that's something for another day this week. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I have a little bit of scraps left in my container, so I will be turning those into something. I have bonus half square triangles. And then I have these really tiny little itty bitty ones. 
But going across the bottom here, it's only one inch. So these would finish really small. I have an idea for them. I talked to my patrons about it. So we'll see what happens. And then I have these little bits. And that's all part of my process of let's use things up and get them out instead of just collecting them. Speaking of that, this fabric came with the neon green dog fabric. So I am using those scraps. So I've used a couple of those now, fulfilling the challenge that I give myself to make sure I use that fabric within a week. Sometimes it might take me two weeks, depending on how busy I am with everything else and when it shows up at the house. So I still have scraps and I still have fabric left in there, but I have used some of it. So it didn't just get put on a shelf or into a container somewhere. It has gotten used. I hope you guys had a wonderful week and you were able to craft even if it was just a little bit in the past week. I hear spring is coming in some states and other states are still buried in the snow, unfortunately, but those states, they're kind of used to it. They know that there's a good chance that they're still going to get snow coming up in April, which it's, it's hard to hear. It really is, especially living down here when I know the flowers are coming up and people have got their gardens going. If you follow Crafty Gemini, she has, she has a wonderful channel. Lots of crafty goodness here on YouTube, but I love to follow her on Instagram. And that's when she shows more of her. She's on a, a small farm, so they have cows and I think they have... I think they have goats too, chicken and stuff, but she's been planting all her seedlings and everything is growing really nice. She's in Northern Florida up in Gainesville. So it's kind of fun to see everything that she's growing. And she's not just growing one or two containers of lettuce. She's growing because not only does she plant them in two gardens, but she also sells her seedlings. And if you follow her on Instagram, you know she also does those kettlebells she is a very hard worker. She is always busy. They have a one of those outdoor kiln pizza oven things. So they're making homemade pizza. Her mom is really old school. So they make all kinds of homemade stuff and everything. I just, I really enjoy watching it. Now, if she had a YouTube channel that was just like her Instagram, I would be watching that all the time. I should double check. I don't think she has one. So thanks for hanging out with me this week. Your scrappy word is brick, like a brick wall. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.